Backed by popular demand, I decided to test the new distribution of FreeNAS, aka FreeNAS 11, and pin it up against the reigning champ over BattleOS, FreeNAS 9.10. If you're a developer or just a techie in general and want your own domain name, you probably know it can be a pain in the butt to get one that simple. That's where .tech comes in. Not only is it easier to find a domain name that fits your needs, but it's also a little more fitting to fly your tech flag high and proud. Techies from Edgar from TechSource, Andrew from GearLive, and Dom Esposito have already gotten theirs set up. So, of course, you know, I had to make BiteMyBits.tech forward directly to my YouTube channel. To claim your spot in the tech space with your own custom .tech domain, go to Git.tech and make sure to use the promo code BMB1 at checkout to get your domain for only $4.99. Before I get too far into this, I do have to say that I think I'm going to be changing up my testing platform, my testing server just a little bit, mainly because I think the server case that I had that I actually got from Rosewell a couple years ago uh, is really starting to give me some problems. Basically, I'm getting errors during installation when I'm using drives that are attached to the back plate of the server uh, case itself. Um, but if I take the case apart and I directly attach, you know, SSDs and things like that uh, to SATA ports, it works just fine. So this actually brings up an interesting point because I was having these kind of problems when I was installing NAS for free, when I was trying to test NAS for free up against free NAS 9.10. Uh, and I, I eventually gave up on NAS for free because I just thought I was just having ridiculous issues with it. But as it turns out, I was having those same issues with free NAS 11. So I tore it apart, I hooked everything up directly just to make sure I can get everything up and running and having it work perfectly. So now I think I have to get a new server case uh, that I can use as a testing platform, or maybe not even a server case. Maybe I'll just get a regular case, I don't know. Problem is it just looks really good in my server rack. Without it, it looks a little naked, I don't know. But anyways, I had a lot of people hit me up both on Twitter and on YouTube asking me to test out FreeNAS 11 and put it up against FreeNAS 9.10. Now I've tested, like I said before, FreeNAS Corral. It was some very mixed issues that I had with that build. It was kind of a whole new redesign, a new you know way of you know having plugins and, and all different things. Like they use Docker instead of gels. Uh, you know, it's just, it wasn't exactly a good test, it wasn't fair, and they even went from a public release back to beta release um, because it was it was having some stability issues. But in Battle OS, FreeNAS 9.10 took the reigning championship with seven transcoded streams at the same time with a conversion rate or a uh, optimization rate of 4.2x. This was at least one transcoding stream better than any other operating system out there. So that was pretty exciting. And it, it told me that if I ever wanted to build, you know, a Plex server and get the most out of my hardware in terms of transcoding ability, FreeNAS was the way to go. So that brings me to FreeNAS 11. How good can it stack up against its little brother FreeNAS 9.10? Well, after I worked out all the issues I had in installing, again, not FreeNAS 11's fault, more of my system's fault, I was able to put that to the test. And really, to no surprise, it performed almost exactly the same. FreeNAS 11 was actually seven transcoded streams exactly the same as FreeNAS 9.10. In fact, it acted exactly the same when I tried to start another direct stream to see if I can get just a, a little bit more performance out of it. Now, if you're unfamiliar with my testing methodology, I basically say, hey, how many transcoded streams can a server do until it fails? So if it can do six transcoded streams and I start a seventh and it starts buffering, that means it can only do six. And then on top of that, I start adding direct play streams, which don't take as many resources, but still take a little bit of resources. So I add the direct streams until that starts buffering, and then I get my maximum. Now I do this because transcoded streams take the most amount of resources. So if for whatever reason you have a server running, you wanna know just about how much a Plex server can transcode as far as being able to serve your friends or family. So with FreeNAS 9.10 and FreeNAS 11, both of them were able to do seven transcoded streams. I was not able to add any direct streams. So the tiebreaker here, which I'm a little hesitant to take too seriously in this case because it is within a margin of error, is the conversion rate or the optimization for the media. So just like every other operating system that I tested in the past, I converted it or optimized it for a mobile platform. That takes it down to a lower bit rate, a lower resolution. So if mobile phones, 
phones or you know iPads or something like that were to access this media, the server wouldn't have to work as hard because it would already have a lower quality to work with. So the optimization rate on FreeNAS 9.10 was 4.2, as I mentioned before. But the optimization rate on FreeNAS 11 was 4.4. So technically FreeNAS 11 is better than 9.10. I mean, technically. But you have to take in consideration that this is only my system testing in a very limited testing environment. As in, I'm not reinstalling or testing these same numbers on multiple systems or running them multiple times. I'm just running these things once. And if you know anything about computers, you know that just random stuff can cause a computer to either run faster or run slower. Some, you know, rogue background application running in the background that's going to slow down the system. I mean, there's all kinds of variables that might happen that could change this by that point too, that can make that test result you know, null and void. Not to say that my entire testing methodology is flawed. I mean, there is a certain standard here that, I mean, a system's only gonna be able to handle as much as it can given the operating system that I'm testing it with. But things like the conversion rating is kind of up in the air for me. But either way, FreeNAS 11 versus 9.10, technically FreeNAS 11 is now the new reigning champ, which is good to know because FreeNAS Corral was a complete disaster. And I am just happy that now we have a more updated version of FreeNAS with, you know, maybe some different features or optimizations that come with it uh, that is still able to perform just as good, if not just a tad bit better than the previous version. So guys, if you wanna learn a little bit more about the different operating systems that I've run and test this with, just in case you haven't been keeping up with Battle OS, I will throw a link up in the cards above or in the description below, linking to the Battle OS Plex series where I do test multiple different versions of operating systems running the Plex Media server to see which one can perform as well. But in the end, FreeNAS seems to be the reigning champ, even against Unraid, which is what I run for Zeus. So that's kind of a letdown for me, but I still like Unraid. But hey, if you guys have any questions or anything, post them down below. I'd be more than happy to take a look at those. And if it's something that I can't answer, I will try to. Uh, as always, thank you for watching. I appreciate every single one of you and have a great day.